Hello there, welcome to another tutorial. Um, Cut Corner Studio have recently been doing a series of comic book logo tutorials and uh, to continue um, the series we're going to look at creating one for Deadpool, the Marvel comic book mercenary, um, one of our particular favourites. Um, if you found this YouTube, if you found this tutorial on YouTube, then um, all your resources will be found at uh, cutcorner.co.uk, and you'll see once we've published this particular post uh, from our site that all the resources will be found there. Um, just very quickly, we'll go into the file to have a look what you will find once you've downloaded it from the site. Um, picture of Ryan Reynolds uh, giving us a little idea of what he's going to look like in the movie. Um, a series of fonts that can only be used for personal use, must add that, we got this from defont.com um, called Rogue Hero, you'll need to install them to be able to complete the tutorial. Um, the final version that we did um, in Inkscape, a red texture that uh, you'll need to uh, gloss up using GIMP and the final version which we'll show you in a second. And then also the GIMP file that we worked on as well that you'll see within this tutorial. So what are we aiming to do today? We're um, going to create this logo. Um, we're going to use a series of different tools within Inkscape to get the shapes um, and the text effects. And so we might as well start now. So I'm just going to close that and I'm going to open up the final document. So this is what we're working towards here. I'm just going to quickly mention how we get this background organized. So I'm going to very quickly paddle up that so that it doesn't warp when I scale it. And I'm just going to place it at the top corner there for reference. I'm always going to go back to it during the tutorial. So starting um, with the document properties, go to File, Document Properties. We're going to have a look at uh, the setup for this particular tutorial and your document. So if I go into background, I've set the um, background to 5.5 five and four zeros. Uh, FF to ensure that it's full color and it's not totally transparent. So if I pull it back up to 255, it'll go to FF. Um, <clears throat> the dimensions of the document are 1600 by 900 and if I go to my grids I've spaced them out at 100 by 100. Um, so let's get started. The um, first thing that we need to work on which is one of the key features of the logo is the eye. So the way I would do that, and this is a new tool that we've in, we, we will introduce today, um, is creating an oval using your circle tool and um, I'm just going to make it go going to make it go black by selecting the colour here, so just making sure that it is black. It's actually set to 80 at the moment, so I'm just going to turn that back up to full strength, so that's now black. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to very quickly show you a tool that we haven't used before, and that's this one here. Tweak objects by sculpting or painting. And what I'll do is just click on that, and as you can see, that by, in my tutorial anyway, the settings are huge. So I'm going to bring down the width to about that size, 16, and I'm going to keep the force relatively strong. And um, making sure that that oval is selected, we go back. I'm just going to start to move into the sides, and as you can see now, the uh, the oval starts to warp a bit, which is what we need to be able to create these eyes. Now, <coughs> excuse me. As you can see, using this tool, that we can create some pretty dynamic shapes. So I'm just going to very quickly tweak that a little bit more. Um, I think it's. Maybe go back a bit. There we go. I'm happy with that. Um, we're now going to basically create the, uh, the final element of the eye, which is this white section here. Same approach, but this time I'm going to create an oval that's going kind of stretching horizontally. I'm going to make it go white, and then very quickly I'm just going to tweak it again. As you can see straight away, it kind of looks like an eye. Now this particular example may not look exactly like the one I've done. Um, it may look even better. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to place that there like so, and I'm going to select both and go Object and Group. Size that down a little bit. And using my alignment tool, I'm just going to quickly bring that into the middle, making sure that it's relative to the page. Now, last thing I need to do is, and if you notice from my example, is there are these little sort of peaks at his eyes. So I'm just going to do that by um, ungrouping this using my Bezier Curves tool. I'm just going to create a little nick. Like so, almost kind of like a diamond shape. I'm going to fill it black and remove. I just move up my document a little bit further so you can see this. I'm going to right click and remove stroke. And then I'm going to select the black 
major part or the biggest part here which is black and the nick and I'm just going to go old path and union and stick it together now zooming in it's still a little bit too geometric so going back to my tweak tool I'm just going to nudge it a little bit as you can see now that's starting to look a little bit angrier and if I move that eye a little bit objects and group push that to the middle I've now got half of Deadpool's Deadpool's face. So if I right click and duplicate now, and I'm just going to press H on my keyboard, that will duplicate the shape and horizontally flip it, which is what I need because I want it dead in line. So I'm just moving that across now. And as you can see there, I've got the two eyes almost finished. I'm just going to go to object and group now. And this time again, I'm going to just place it right in the middle of the page. Right in the middle of the page. And um, now it's to start looking at the text itself. Now, as I said, the, the font that you'll need to install is called Rogue Hero. So um, I'm just going to find that here by highlighting and just typing Rogue Hero in. And there it is selected. And I'm just going to write Deadpool. And rather than placing it vertically center. I'm just going to go horizontally so it's there and uh, selecting it one more time I'm just going to nudge it up using my up arrow on my keyboard and place it roughly over the top. Now using a gradient um, I'm going to use a linear gradient this time rather than a, a radial gradient. I'm going to click and drag at the top and using the bottom making sure that bottom circle is selected it's gone blue I'm going to set that to a slightly lighter red and I'm going to make the top bit a bit lighter even, maybe a bit too light, maybe darken that a little bit more, I'll pull that up slightly, bring that down, I still think that's a little bit too dark so I'm just going to make that even darker by, two. there we go, that's better. And I'm now going to start playing with the outline. So what I'm going to do is just go to this, just 90% grey, right click and set stroke. And if I click on my stroke settings here, I'm just going to increase it to say 3 pixels to make it a little bit wider. And using the stroke paint, I'm just going to make sure that it's a linear gradient. And that will put an effect over the top of it. But it's going from left to right and I need it to go downwards. So I'm just going to click the create gradient tool and that should bring that up for me. So if I pull that top bar up and bring that round, that will bring the gradient for the font, for the font outline um, into a vertical direction, which is what I need. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just add that kind of shine over the top. So I'm going to go right click and duplicate and I'll pull it aside make it go white and I'm going to remove the stroke and I'm now going to get an oval and cover it across the top select both your path and intersection that should leave me the top part of the word placing it as close to the top I'm just going to focus zoom in there now as close on as I can and then use my radial gradient again to pull that downwards, which adds that shine to the, to the text. Now it's covering over the edges, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do is make sure that top element is selected and go control and nine, just twice. And that then kind of sits in as if it's kind of more, um, more kind of organic and more organic shine. Um, <clears throat> last thing to do. Um, I'm not lasting, but certainly one of the last final parts of this is I'm just going to start putting this haze on the background. And I've done this in other tutorials, so this is fairly straightforward. I'm just going to make that oval grey. Um, I'm going to go to my alignment, make sure it's dead in the middle, and I'm just going to blur it out. Select it again, go object, lower to bottom, that sticks it behind it. And then what I'm going to do is just create a series of different ovals in between the letters just to add a little bit more um, of an effect to it. And what I'm going to do is work smartly in just a second. 
Um, I'm going to select them all, hold down shift, click on each of the elements and they'll all select whilst you hold down shift, make them go white and very quickly make them blur, a bit too much there, there we go, now object group and then I'm just going to go object lower to bottom and that then sticks that in there like that. I'm not going to bother with the tagline, which is Merc with the mouth. I'm just going to move a bit quicker. You get the idea. The font I used for that actual element there is Euro style. And now what I'm going to do is export this um, and get this into GIMP. So file, export bitmap, select page, 150. And I think I've already selected as Deadpool background. Um, but I'm just going to call it tutorial for now so it doesn't overwrite the finished version. Hit export. Okay. So there's the, the, the piece I've uh, worked with there. So it's almost ready. I'm just going to right click open with GIMP. So that should open up. And I need to size down the interface because it always opens up quite large on my Mac. I'm just going to pull that aside. And what I'm going to do is go into my file with all my resources and get my red texture out, and just drag and drop it. Now I can't see Deadpool anymore, but if I go to my mode here and just select overlay, there's my final piece. I'm just going to go file overwrite this one. And as you can see, it's loading up. Okay, so I'll pull that aside now. And there's my final Deadpool poster. Um, and that is the end of the tutorial. Um, if you really enjoyed this tutorial, you found it on YouTube, please make sure that you uh, subscribe to our channel to get more up to date tutorials. Um, and also, um, just to reiterate, um, we really appreciate the feedback and we really like our reviews. So uh, if you get an opportunity, you can drop on our site and subscribe to our blog as well, of course. Um, but if you can, um, jump onto our Google Plus page. And um, if you click about, we'd really appreciate um, a written review based on the tutorial that you found. It would be really helpful and give us an opportunity to get some qualitative feedback to know what we've got to do to improve. So thank you very much and um, speak to you again soon.